Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and we're going to be doing another timeline and final thoughts uh, for this time. Ethiopia was the most recently completed campaign on the Twitch channel. We were going for an achievement that you had to control all of the Coptic holy sites. Uh, there's one up here. You start with one of them. Uh, there's one over here. There's one in Constant, or actually, sorry, no, Aleppo and Alexandria. So those are the five. A one, two, three, four, five. Um, although we did need Constantinople for a final uh, achievement as well called Priester John. So there's an achievement to own all of the Coptic holy sites and, and make sure those provinces are Coptic. So get all five of the blessings. And then there's also an achievement for taking Constantinople, which basically means, you know, we have to essentially dominate uh, the Mamluks and dominate the Ottomans and, and everybody over here and stuff. So. Ethiopia is actually a pretty cool uh, country. There's some gold, a couple gold provinces that you can get very early on. You don't start with either of them, I don't think. I think I think uh, you have a subject though, don't you? I think we have a couple subjects. Maybe one of those subjects that has a gold province. There's a couple gold provinces over here. Of course, there's a bunch of gold down here. If you go down this way as well, lots down here. Some in Kilwa, so on and so forth. Um, a lot of people I remember. Let's let's get the timeline going here. A lot of people I remember in the. Uh, in the in the twitch chat we're really concerned like with this idea of the ottomans right like oh no how are you going to get constantinople how are you going to get this one over here how are you going to get aleppo right the ottomans the ottomans the ottomans but ever since 1.3 i'm telling you guys the mamluks are the scariest thing in town so the mamluks were by far the scariest thing they ended up declaring war on us multiple times aggressively and we were able to just sort of barely hold off so we're doing ethiopia things here we're trying to unify this area but i will say adal is absolutely just popping off over here and was was doing a huge amount of conquest early we're very lucky that the mamluks never went down and took this this holy site right here so we were able the mamluks never made ground down they were mostly focused in this area here the ottomans actually allied aq and that was actually something that body blocked them quite a bit since we're going to see that aq does very well but they also go in and take a piece of karaman that actually slows down uh, the Ottomans' conquest significantly. So we're really trying to focus on taking this before we split it with the Mamluks, because I do not want to split this holy site with the Mamluks. I want to take all of this. It does mean that there's not really any defensible terrain up here. We end up building a fort on this province here, which was a highlands fort. Uh, not a bad one. Of course, we do have uh, some really good mountain forts and stuff like that in these mountainous areas in Ethiopia, which are fantastic if we were to ever fight battles there. But most of the battles against the Mamluks were fought on this province here. I think the very first war against the Mamluks was pretty early on. They just sort of hard declared on us. And we just had to, we ended up getting, I think we went 20,000 troops over our force limit by spending like hundreds of ducats on mercenaries and taking out a bunch of loans. But we ended up winning battle after battle after battle here. Now, I think they were declaring holy wars on us. We also went religious so that we had holy wars. I need to double check if that's actually what they were doing to us. Because I remember needing to win battles. I remember needing to win battles against the Mamluks. So the fact they were able to... Um, yeah, I think they kept doing holy wars against us. I kid you not. And uh, that actually allowed us to... Uh, whereas if they'd done a conquest war for this land up here, it would have been very hard to defend this land. And they would have had taking war score. Instead, we were fighting down here in the mountains... And, and winning the battles and getting a huge amount of war score by winning the battles. Yeah, the Mamluks have definitely attacked us at this point. I think they're about to attack us a second time. The second time we actually take land from them. So we'll kind of see what that looks like. Although we do need to, to do our own attack against the Mamluks if we're going to actually sort of uh, be able to uh, uh, be able to take things without having to pay a lot of uh, Diplo points. I actually can't remember if this was an aggressive war or a defensive war. This might have been our third war. If it was our third war against the Mamluks, we attacked them. But they very well could have attacked us for the second time and we just took this land. We split them in half, though. So this is going to destabilize them in a number of ways. We do not control the strait down here, so that's a little bit of a bummer. That's something we're going to want to fix. I think at one point we actually vassalize. Oh, no, actually, I think we vassalized the Adal at this point. Because that's right, there's a point in the timeline when they actually come down and they actually, they had that big expansion early on. Then they con condense down to like just a couple provinces. We vassalize them and then we end up reconquering a big chunk of that land. Not obviously not going back into the land that we had already taken over, but, but going back into uh, some of their other bits and bobs. So yeah, I think we do control the strait at this point. 
So we could use our ships of naval dominance. Of course, most of the Mamluk fleet is in the Mediterranean. It's not on the uh, Gulf of Aden side. And the Mamluks have no way to get their ships around, right? They don't have the, uh, the naval sailing capacity to get around there. So yeah, we just integrated a doll there. That was, that was us doing that. Once we were able to split the Mamluks, we were able to kind of decisively win wars against them, although they were still much, much more challenging than uh, anything else that we'd have to face in, in this run. The Ottomans, you can see, are basically literally locked right now. I, I think there's like a 50 or 60 or 70 year uh, phase where they get no con they, they conquest. They don't go on any conquests. That's because Hungary popped off this game. AQ just sort of conveniently blocked the Ottomans there. Mamluks were always too strong that the Ottomans never really wanted to like circumvent AQ and attack the Mamluks. They did try to get some land up here, but we're going to see that Russia is going to do pretty well. The Commonwealth did well enough to just sort of prevent and block uh, the Ottomans from doing more. You can see the Commonwealth forming up right there in 1550. But yeah, the Ottomans really don't get to do anything this entire game. We're just sort of trying to build up our strength and, and consolidate, beating up the Mamluks when we get a chance. Mamluks were the defender of the faith, and it kind of allowed some of these smaller nations down here to survive a little bit longer. Interesting thing was, though, once we split them in half, once we split the Mamluks in half, it actually meant that the defender of the faith bonus that they had only persisted to Africa, no longer included protecting um, uh, Saudi Arabia there and the Arabian Peninsula. Ironically, a uh, fungi uh, was actually allied to the Mamluks for a long time, and since we were attacking the Mamluks directly, it would have been um, inefficient to take land from fungi. Fungi ended up getting allies with the Mamluks. They ended up getting allies with like, like a bunch of people over here. I want to say like Afghanistan stuff. It was annoying. Like they were getting all kinds of ridiculous, crazy, silly alliances, just because you know it's it's one of those uh, things where the AI specifically tries to. Um, mess with the player right like uh block the player but look aq here popping up quite a bit we've got aleppo we have alexandria at this point so we need to get this final holy site up here we're just you can see it's just slithering for this just slithering for this province at this point the ottomans and aq are no longer allied they did finally sort of sever that alliance and it was a perfect time for us to be able to swoop in and uh, start picking apart aq the ottomans at this point now are actually getting trounced, I think, by Austria, Hungary, and the Commonwealth. I think all of them are teaming up on the Ottomans pretty strongly. I think we have Russia bearing down on the Crimea holdings of the Ottomans as well. You could see that, heck, at this point, Serbia and Albania pop out, and we take Constantinople, and we then, actually, we took Constantinople in a, in a war against the Ottomans before we'd even taken uh, this land here. I think when we actually got across these straits, I think the Ottomans were getting clobbered by uh, by some of the Europeans and they didn't have uh, full control or we actually marched around or something. I can't remember exactly, but the war against the Ottomans was actually pretty uneventful. We took Constantinople. It was the only thing we needed in a holy war, so we didn't take any uh, Diplo for that. You can see uh, knights have actually popped out here. Venice has gotten a little bit of their land back, um, interestingly enough. That's it. 1603, Priester John. Priester John and the Blessed One, I think is what it's called. A Blessed Nation and Priester John. There you go. Uh, what did we do for ideas? We did... We did religious ideas first. Now, that's a little bit painful on the admin. Of course, Ethiopia starts with a 665 or 656 or 655 or something like that you start with an amazing ruler and he lived to like 70 years old or something insane like that so we were easily able to get renaissance to spawn here we were easily able to like just sort of spam develop some of our provinces uh, we you know we have 40 development capital which is even a mountain province it's like uh and and also we have a high development uh, area here that was our old capital and stuff but we were very easily able to develop um, for the uh, for the institutions we've developed uh, global trade here you could see um, so we were really swimming in points the whole time you could see that we it just global trade just started we have a province here that has global trade and we have like 800 of each monarch point I mean we're just swimming in monarch points which is fantastic we have a great economy well holy cow we're making a hundred ducats a month that's insane actually to me 20 of it is from gold our inflation is actually going down we have no inflation issues 
If we look at our gold provinces that we own, we have taken Kilwa recently, I think. Yep, we've just taken Kilwa. Kilwa was actually an ally to us for a while while we were doing our conquest down here, but then we ended up swooping Kilwa. Mutapa is, is, has sort of won out down here. Mostly Kilwa was actually getting crushed on all sides. But we do we would want to come down here and clean up all of this land down here probably. Clean up Fungi. Continue to beat up the Mamluks. I mean, for the most part, it's like we could continue just to expand. I mean, 1603 is pretty early. Pretty early. I, I'm sure we're number one in the world unless... Oh, no, we're not. Russia is actually number one in the world? Wow. That's a little interesting to me that it's not like Spain or something. Spain is probably number three, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the Ottomans really kind of, like, blocked themselves quite a bit. Um, we could do a Golden Age if we even cared. I very rarely even do Golden Ages these days, it seems. Unfortunately, Ethiopia has generic missions. There was a free update in this region for Ethiopia. But, unfortunately, this was before they were doing custom mission trees. So, Ethiopia never got the love that they deserved. Although, they do have these little missions for when you conquer the holy sites. You can hit these little buttons. And you can... Uh, you can get uh, local missionary strength in some of those areas to help convert uh, to Coptic from the other religion. But our conversion rates are just absolutely bonkers. We've got 12.5% over here. It's just absolutely insane. Uh, even these high development Sunni areas, we can we can convert in, in just no time. Um, we have a huge uh, tolerance of the true faith so that the unrest in the places that we actually conquer and then convert, they basically, the unrest goes to zero. It's It's pretty awesome. So it's pretty nice. Ethiopia does have uh, some little, I, I think we had some fancy little estates early on. I think we eventually, did we eventually go parliament? Parliament is just really strong. I just think it's really cool. So we ended up going parliament. Our governing capacity is, uh, actually we're almost at our maximum governing capacity. How many ma manufacturers have we built? Some. Some. How many courthouses? A decent amount of courthouses. Decent amount of temples, decent amount of workshops. Built any state houses? No, we haven't built any state houses yet, though. But yeah, for the most part, uh, that is the Ethiopia run. This was uh, a fort that we built here. I know some people um, build their fort uh, sort of more forward to, to sort of prevent the Mamluks from devastating this area. Most of this area is junk. Um, having them siege this down really didn't make any difference. Having this fort here and, and getting the defensive bonus for that made a lot of sense. Although realistically, like looking at this and thinking about river crossings, having that fort there would have been fine too because of the river crossing. Because minus one, minus one, right? That's not a bad spot to put a fort. I just realized the river crossing there that, that would be incurred if they were to be moving this way. But... I don't know if this actually would have blocked them from just being able to walk down this way, though, to be honest. Anyways, of course, now we have these really good mountain forts up here, which are just absolutely fantastic uh, if we were to actually do future future wars against anybody. But there's no threats, right? We have we have dominated the area. And, and there you go. We're getting, I think, a pretty insane amount of prestige per year. We're almost equilibrium at 100. We're, we've almost equilibrium... Uh, our, our equilibrium is almost at 100, which is pretty insane. We have a terrible air right here. We should probably just chuck that guy if we cared. And then go back into here and click that for a little bit. I don't know why we didn't get rid of that guy. He must have just popped on. So yeah, we're gaining prestige right now and we're at 60. So we're, we're basically at about a, about a 90 equilibrium there, which is pretty crazy. Um, but thanks everybody for watching this episode, this timeline and final thoughts for Ethiopia. If you guys have more questions, uh, fire away and just let me know. Um, what you guys are wondering, making a hundred ducats a month, a pretty good ruler at the moment, at least 67 years old. We probably should be paying. I don't know why, like, how are we making 90 ducats a month and we're not paying more for advisors? I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, we went religious quality, economic trade. So the economic of course saves us a huge amount in terms of development cost. Also just gives us a cheaper building cost and also helps us with the inflation issues of the gold and everything that we were leveraging early on. We have pretty good ideas with Ethiopia. Very defensively focused as well, but not bad. Quality is just fantastic. We ended up going trade. I can't remember if we were thinking about trying to spawn global trade over here. 
if we thought we could. I don't think we thought we could. I just think we thought trade would be good because we're pulling, we're pulling from a lot of these areas in India and just trying to really uh, bump up the Gulf of Aden. I think realistically, you know, we could move up to Alexandria. There could be an argument for that. I think there's an argument to move to Zanzibar or move to the Cape and actually try to try to funnel all this down because um, there's less leakage in Zanzibar and in the Cape and we can control the downstream a little bit better, but we would be foregoing all of the land that we take up here. So unfortunately, trade, uh, quite honestly, uh, trade node-wise, Ethiopia doesn't really have a great option there. I mean, you might think Alexandria, but Alexandria has a lot of tug. There's a lot of nations that pull out of Alexandria, so it's much harder to to uh, just keep control of that if everybody's jamming their merchants in Alexandria so uh, and such. But thanks, everybody, for watching, guys. I will see you guys in the next one.